Good morning folks, I've just dropped my van off for its annual MOT and service, my scariest time of the year. Now that leaves me in the middle of nowhere for a few hours with nothing to do. So you're coming with me, let's see what we can find. The first junction we come to, this is a decision that's going to define our day. If we go left, we've got IKEA, a bland retail park. If we turn right, we're into the countryside. You know which way I'm going to go, don't you? Well, that's brought me out in a pavement somewhere south of Edinburgh. I'm not quite sure where I am, but I've got an idea. That idea is to try and find one of the finest and most significant pieces of Gothic architecture anywhere in the UK. Now I know we're in the general area, it's within a few kilometres anyway. It's a small place, but I'm sure you'll have heard of it. On a day like today when I've got all this time to kill, I don't mind trying to find these places without using a map or my phone. But I got quite lucky, I saw a sign and I know that this path will lead me eventually to the village of Roslyn and Roslyn Chapel, both of which are spelt differently by the way. It's a wee bit further away than I thought though. Now we've stumbled onto this little path in nature reserve. It's nice to get off the main drag and take the slow route. According to the sign at the start here, it said that this area inspired Robert Burns to write all his poems and songs dedicated to nature. But I never know whether all that stuff's true or not. Might just be made up. So welcome to Main Street, Roslyn. Unfortunately, I did have to use my phone in the end to get here. I got a wee bit lost. Oh wow, look at that ghost sign. How cool is that? But anyway, like I say, I had to use my phone to get directions in the end, but when I was on my phone, I was checking the Roslyn Chapel website, and apparently you have to have tickets booked in advance, so I was hastily trying to get one, but it's okay, we're all good. Tell you what guys, it's turned out a beautiful day. We've just left the little village of Roslyn behind us and I can see the chapel off in the distance. Now I'm still a wee bit early for my entrance time. Still got about 10 minutes to wait. But even if you're not going inside, there's this little path around the perimeter that'll still give you great views. And just round the bottom of this little muddy path, you can see the basement of the chapel. I think it's called the crypt. But yeah, if you're not paying to go in, that's about as much as you'll see. Still pretty nice. By the way, my entrance ticket is normally 9.50, I think, but there was some deal online and I got it for a fiver. So we exit the visitor centre and come into the grounds and we've got the chapel just in front of us. And wow, it's so small but so beautiful. To walk right round the chapel, that's taking me no more than 30 seconds. But there's a reason for its size. This wasn't a place of public worship, this was just built for William Sinclair and his family. That just shows the power, wealth and influence they had back in the day. So I hear what you're saying, are you going to show us on the inside? Well actually no, that's the one thing you're not allowed to do is take any photographs or film inside the chapel. But I've been able to work my magic just for you and we'll be back later to do just that.
To me it's so interesting to think what the world was like when this place was being built, when these very stones were put in place. James II was ruling Scotland. In China you've got the growth of the Ming Dynasty. In Italy you've got Leonardo da Vinci being born into Renaissance culture. To be able to actually touch that history is such a privilege. Once you head back over to the visitor centre, there's a great multimedia display on the history of the site in the chapel. I really like this table display, showing how the site was transformed in the 1400s into a building that still stands to this day. You then move on to a really nice gift shop and cafe. Unfortunately, no snacks for me to review today as I was well stocked up with food already. So that's us for now, but like I say, we will be back. Once the sun's gone down and the last of the visitors have left for the day, I'll give you a very rare and privileged look inside the chapel. I'm really looking forward to it and I hope you are too. I'll see you in a bit. But while we're here, it'd be a shame not to have a look down at Roslyn Castle, which sits just about 200 metres from the chapel. Now both of these places are of course very famous from a book I've never read and a film I've never seen, The Da Vinci Code. And you might recognise the bridge and the castle down here if you have seen the movie. Now I'm fairly sure this is the bridge that Mr Hanks himself has walked across. There's not much left of the old castle though, is there? Although there's not much left here, what a movie location! It's just perfect! Just a couple of minutes walk down the path from the castle and you'll be onto a bridge over to Roslyn Glen, which looks like a perfect place for a walk on a day like today. Certainly somewhere to come back and explore in the future. So here we are folks, everyone's gone home and I've got Roslyn Chapel all to myself. How exciting is this? And if anything, it looks even more spectacular at night than it does during the day. Of course, during the day, you've got the sun coming in through the stained glass windows, but at night, it feels a little bit more authentic because back in the day, there would have been no stained glass windows. They would have gone in maybe the 18th, 19th century. And before that, it would just have been wooden shutters. Just walking around here on my own, it certainly heightens the senses and the silence is almost deafening. But it gives me a sense of the history of the place, the myth, the legend, from when it was built originally in the 1400s. And then you've got when, say, Cromwell's army would have come here with their horses and stored their horses in here. Imagine using this place as a stable. And then you've got all the modern myth and legend that stems from the Dan Brown book, The Da Vinci Code and the movie that followed, and that's just brought so much more popularity to Roslyn Chapel.
Right guys, brave Steve, all on his own at night. He's gonna go down into the crypt. This is the oldest part of Roslyn Chapel. And back in the day, this would have been used as a workshop when they were building the main chapel. And down here, you've got these markings on the wall. How old are they? But more importantly, what do they mean? Now through this little archway we've got all the old stonework and decoration that's fallen into disrepair over the years. Look at this little fella. And we've got the mirrors here so you can see the guys around the corner. Oh, he doesn't look too happy. This is such an incredible place, it really is. Now if I'm not mistaken, somewhere under the chapel is a vault and that's where William Sinclair himself is buried in full knight's armour. What a thought that is, eh? On here we've got the apprentice pillar. You'll notice that a lot of the pillars are different in here. But the legend of this one is that the master's apprentice did this all on his own. And when the master came back, he was so filled with jealousy that he murdered the apprentice on the spot. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's a nice story. So that's us all done for today, folks. It's getting late. I'm going to have to tear myself away from here. But thank you so much for joining me today in this totally unexpected treat. And I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.